All right, so here is our fully cooked animation. You can see it right here. Uh, and that's without any effects or anything at all. So what we're going to do is apply some fun uh, effects to make this look very distorted, very washed out, very like old uh, VHX, uh, VHS tape here in After Effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply all my effects, effects with an adjustment layer here. And the first effect I'm going to use is, uh, let's just get a hue saturation adjustment. And what we're going to do is just kind of like desaturate this ever so slightly, like bring down some of the colors. So we want the colors to be a little bit washed out. Next thing we're going to do is, you know, once your VHS, your tape kind of gets played enough, it gets blurry. It loses that magnetic uh, those value magnetic uh, strength and the picture goes a little bit fuzzy, right? So what we're going to do is use some cross blur uh, and why I like to use cross blur is because you control uh, both in the vertical in the uh, or the horizontal and the vertical here uh, the length so you can kind of add different lengths of blur depending on what you want so something like you know, that looks like kind of glowy. That looks kind of cool. Uh, let's give a little bit more blur in the X than the Y. So maybe like 10 and 4. That looks pretty good. So we got a little bit of blurriness going on. Uh, and then what I want to do is, you know, like I mentioned before, uh, with, with some of the stuff is you need some of the channel, like the color channel separation stuff happening because that's, uh, you know, very popular in a, a lot of, 80s stuff where you kind of have the split RGB. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go and grab, we're going to blur some of the channel, the color channel. So I'm going to go to channel blur and just bring this over here. And you can kind of play around with what looks best. So we can blur the red channel and get this really cool red haze going on. Or we can get, um, you know, some greenish haze or maybe even some blue. So actually blue looks kind of cool. You get some like yellow tint in there or you can, you know, maybe combine a few of these. So this looks pretty good. Maybe one or two in the red. Or actually, maybe a lot more in the red. I don't know. Let's maybe split the difference here. Get a little bit in the red, maybe five and say like 15 in uh, the blue and maybe we can bring down uh, the blurriness of the cross blur there because it's getting a little too blurry I think uh, so now what we can do is go ahead and turn on these uh, repeat edge pixels actually let's turn it on for the cross blur but I actually like these fringes on the outside here we'll, we'll keep that uh, so the next thing I'm going to do in my effect mixed collada here is uh, I'm going to go in uh, and grab a blur. So stylize, or I'm sorry, uh, grab a glow. Uh, and I'm just going to crank up the radius fairly high here because we just want some like glowy color. And let's bring the threshold down. So now we got this really cool, nice kind of hot spots. I can really blur this out. And maybe bring the intensity down just a little bit, just a subtle kind of thing. So that looks, that kind of pumps up the color, liking that. Uh, now let's go and talking about pumping up color, let's go into our curves and just start like adjusting the curves here so we can kind of crush the levels here a little bit and really add some contrast. We can go into our red channel and kind of pump up some of the reds a little bit. Go into our green. So right now I'm just kind of like tweaking things and seeing what kind of adds some cool uh, color. Like introduce some greens in here maybe. And let's go into blue since we have a lot of blues. This is going to really help out a lot. So we can have like some reddish kind of composition. We really crush the blues here. It looks kind of cool. Just maybe something like this. I still want some like blues in here. Cool. So that's, let me just close up all this stuff. 
we got a glow, we got our curves. Uh, next thing I want to do is if you have it, it's not essential, but I like to add some star glow here. Uh, and you can see that really adds a lot of, uh, you know, this looks like 80s already, but this is too much 80s. We need to bring down the 80s-ness of this. Uh, so I'm going to go into the pre-process of star glow and up the threshold so only the brightest spots get that kind of star glow added to it. So like right about here, like I like that the hottest spot on the chrome on the cone has the star glow effect. Uh, and I'm just going to bring the streak length to a very subtle value like 4. Because you can see like before and after, it's very subtle. But it adds that kind of like nice glint blur. Uh, and I'm going to go into my color maps and change this from green to like enlightenment. I think it's a little bit more purplish. And then the color map B... Uh, let's do something like electric. And I think that electric boogie woogie woogie song is like 70s or 60s. So I, I won't sing that song, even though I did. We're in the wrong decade. So here's the star glow before and after. It's just very, very subtle. Uh, and the final thing I'm going to add to our little look here is, you know, we need some grain. Uh, we need more fuzziness added to this, more noise. So we have the noisy reflection here that we had from rendering out in Cinema 4D. And I'm going to add just some noise in uh, to the whole entire thing in After Effects using just noise and just giving it like a small value of like 5. So that just adds a little bit more grungy and gr uh, graininess to our composition. And if I render this out, we can see that... This looks, you know, kind of like an old washed out VHS and that's looking pretty cool. And we can see the difference between the totally untreated, perfectly clean, nice crisp edges render from uh, cinema. And then we just crap it all up, make it all VHS and run down and worn down because the 80s were like 30 something years ago, right? I'm 33. So yeah, 30 years ago. So this looks kind of old. Uh, using all these effects. So the next thing we're going to do is render this out and we're going to make uh, an animated GIF out of this inside of Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead, render this guy. I like rendering uh, as a PNG, but you can kind of render this as anything and uh, render this out and then we'll jump into Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and we're going to grab our rendered 80s uh, composition here that we rendered from After Effects and you know really you can bring anything any kind of animation that you made uh, but the key thing for GIFs is again you want the animation to be fairly short if you're doing a loop uh, the shorter it is the less information the smaller the file, file size uh, and you can also cheat this by uh, importing it and actually rendered this out as a 30 frames per second, so the default. Uh, what we can do is bring this in as a 15 uh, frame per second animation, and this is going to import it as uh, an animation that's two minutes or two seconds long. Uh, and why that is is because since this is 30 seconds, and we said to interpolate it as 15, it's going to double it, and that's actually going to slow it down, and that actually works. Uh, with a lot of faster movements, you might want you might actually want this uh, this kind of slow effect, or we can actually just right click on this layer and just crank up the speed to two hundred percent, and we'll get our speed back and kind of lose some frames, lose half of the frames in the uh, process. Just kind of keep that in mind. So, depending on what you choose. Uh, whether at double speed or full speed like this, uh, we can now make this into a animated GIF by going into File, going to Export, and we're going to save for web. I don't know why this is legacy, because GIFs are really fun and cool right now and very popular. They should really update this. But that all aside, we're going to go save for web, and it's going to bring up this menu here. And we're just going to kind of run through uh, kind of compressing this and kind of optimizing your animation for uh, GIF formation. Uh, so we have all the different color uh, reduction algorithms up here. I like to stick to either adaptive or perceptual. 
a tutorial for making GIFs is kind of incomplete just because of the fact that your workflow is going to change depending on what kind of uh, image you have. So the more complicated the image, sometimes perceptual might work better and, and have better results and sometimes adaptive will. Uh, so it's all really dependent, but it's just about learning what things to kind of tweak and keep in mind to kind of test things out and see what works for your image. Because like I said, every image is going to be different. So you can see that perceptual, at least to my eye, doesn't look as good as adaptive. Uh, you can also keep, uh, this is going to be a big thing to keep in mind is this uh, estimated file size here. So even though adaptive looked better, uh, perceptual, so we got 3.9, 3.8, so you only lost, uh, you know, a tenth of, of a, of a megabyte, so, or a hundred K, so really you want, like, I'd rather get the quality in there, because what's, what's a hundred K, like, who cares, so another thing you're going to want to keep in mind is this web snap, now what this web snap does is limits your color table based on like web colors that are safe web colors. So the more you crank this up, the smaller your file size is going to be, but and we're going to have this crank a little bit and get the spinning beach ball of death. You're going to see how it really degrade, uh, degrades your image. So usually you like to kind of, I like to stay personally like somewhere in like the 30 to 50 range. Once you get over 50, I feel like the, the image quality really degrades. So let's try 33 and see what this looks like. And that looks fairly good. Uh, and we still got 3.9. Usually like Dribble and, and tr uh, Tumblr and stuff like that, they usually want you to stay under five megs. If you're uploading the Dribble, I think it's eight megs. Uh, but every service is different, but I like to try to keep it under five just as a rule. Uh, so right now, uh, we have some pattern dither, and what dither is, is basically adding noise to kind of get a smoother uh, gradient, and that's just because of how your eyes work. It's trying to blend those uh, gradients together uh, with noise. So if we have no dither, you're going to see this banding, and that's basically what dither does, is it kind of adds noise to try to blur that banding so it looks a little bit more um, seamless or smooth. So right now we're, we're set to diffusion and diffusion kind of allows you to set your own lossiness. And this is sometimes good, sometimes bad. This actually looks pretty bad. So, uh, but again, look at our size here, 1.2. So we really dramatically, like we, we more than halved our gift size, but we really, really made this look not so good. So we're going to bring the lossiness down. Uh, usually diffusion and lossiness does not look very good. Personally, I don't like it. It just adds a bunch of noise. I have better success with the pattern because it just kind of applies a pattern of noise. and It's more uniform, and I think it, it even though it fuzzies your image, it looks a lot, uh, the quality looks a lot better. Everything's a lot more smooth. Everything's more uniform. Uh, and you can see if we try to zoom in here, actually I won't zoom in, but hopefully you guys can see there's like a pattern of noise that's applied as like an overlay almost to help with the banding. Uh, we also have just regular noise, like ununiform noise. So right now we have 3.9 megs. And actually just adding some uniform noise really didn't uh, hurt that much. Uh, and our colors is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm just going to go back to pattern just because I like the pattern noise a little bit better. Uh, this is another thing. If our, if our file size is really, really high, you might want to see how many colors you can get rid of. So right now at 256, it looks pretty good. We can go to 128 and kind of see how that looks. Uh, and really what I like to do is just see how low I can go uh, and also see how much uh, image space I saved and just try to weigh the benefits of both. Like if, you know, that degradation in quality wasn't terrible, but I only saved what, like 700 kilobytes. So at the end of the day, I think for this, for this GIF, let's just try 64. 
I think for this gift, since at uh, at the highest level of color, 256, we're, we're still under 5 megs, I think I'm just going to stick with that. I'm just going to stick with 256. But you also, you know, if this was above, like sometimes animations can be close to 10 megs, you want to try to experiment with what size you can get away with uh, sacrificing quality uh, and all that stuff. And actually, you noticed 256 to 128, there's really not that much of a difference. So, you know, maybe you want to go with 128, but you know what? We can, we're, we're fine. We're, we're under five. Let's do that. Uh, and the last thing is this looping option. So to have this loop as a seamless animation, we're going to change this looping option from once to forever. So we're going to loop forever. So there we go. Uh, we're going to save this out and just save it wherever you want to save this at 80s animation. And we'll save this out. And then all I have to do is once this is done, uh, you know, bring up, bring up my files here. Go to my tutorials, go to my retro, and then here's our GIF, and we can open it in uh, Google Chrome. And there it is. There's our looping GIF. Uh, so right there. And so that's basically how you can create a 80s style uh, animation uh, using Cinema 4D, creating everything in here, and then bring it into After Effects and applying a really blurry, uh, blurry VHS look where the colors are faded, the image is a little bit blurred, we add some noise, uh, and then all bring it all the way into Photoshop and creating a GIF. So hopefully that makes you uh, equipped to start making your own 80s retro goodness. Uh, and if you make something, as always, I really want to see it, so share it. And if you have any questions, be sure to hit me in the comments section. And be sure to check out uh, Kid Mograph, Gustavo, and uh, James White Signal Noise. Uh, they do a lot of this really cool style of uh, design and animation, so keep following them. They're big inspirations for this tutorial today. But hopefully this gets you into making some 80s stuff and having fun. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.